Hello, and welcome to our Do-It-Yourself Bible Study for Park Ridge Community Church. I'm Pastor Carol, and it is my honor to journey with you through scriptures and study to see where God is leading us today. Over the last couple of weeks, we've been considering what it means to choose community. Blessed be the tie that binds our hearts in Christian love. Have you thought about the sacred bond that creates community? It's really pretty extraordinary. People of all ages, from all sorts of different backgrounds, walk together on this journey of faith, sharing pieces of themselves, volunteering alongside one another, working with each other, and over time through worshiping and singing and praying and studying and making phone calls and sending cards, we realize that we're in. We are a part of this community that God has created. God has knit us together and we found support. We've been encouraged and even sometimes challenged by one another. This thing called community is remarkable and it is a gift from God. We see God's love reflected in one another. As we wrap up this season and this time of considering how community shapes us and how we shape community, I invite you to spend a moment in prayer. Would you pray with me? God of our hearts, we give you thanks for community that has brought us to this place in our lives. Thank you for shaping us. Thank you for community that builds us up, that teaches us, that encourages us, and that pushes us to continue to grow. Help us to not become complacent, but to continue to strive to learn and grow Help us to speak the truth even when it's difficult. Help us to hear the truth even when it's difficult. And in our speaking and in our listening, in our praying and in our worshiping, in our serving and in our working together, God, shape us evermore. We pray in the name of your Son, Jesus, the way, the truth, and the life. Amen. So Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors and teachers to equip his people for the work of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. Then we will no longer be infants tossed back and forth by the waves and blown here and there by every wind of teaching and by the cunning and craftiness of people in their deceitful schemings. Instead, speaking the truth in love, we will in all things grow up in him who is the head, that is Christ. From him the whole body, joined and held together by every supporting ligament, grows and builds itself up in love as each part does its work. Think a little bit about the word truth. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. What is truth exactly? When you think about finding the truth, when you've been told the truth or when you've not been told the truth, what has that meant to you? As people of God, we are implored to speak the truth in love. Speak the truth in love. Now, I don't know about you, but sometimes I don't really want to hear the truth. If I look a certain way and it's maybe not so good, maybe I don't really want to hear that, mm, not looking so good today. Are you sick? Sometimes I don't want to hear the truth. Like your words hurt me. And yet, in the context of relationship, in the context of true community, speaking the truth, articulating our truth, becomes holy work. Think about that for a minute. 
in the space of community, we're safe to speak our truth, to tell our stories, to share our broken hearts, and to trust that others within our community will honor our truth with active listening, love, and compassion. In community, we don't seek to fix one another. When we hear a story, we don't immediately jump to, well, what can I do? How can I fix that? Or do we? Sometimes we do. But we, as the people of God, trust that it is God who will mend our brokenness. And we who will sit together and listen to one another, seeking truth together. Our Stephen ministers are some shining examples of people who seek to speak the truth in love. Within the context of a Stephen ministry relationship, a Stephen minister and their care receiver have frequent conversations every week, touching base on where God is. They work intentionally through a challenge or a crisis, seeking God, seeking wisdom, and seeking the truth together. That relationship is protected by care, by confidentiality, and by love. Speaking the truth in love. There is a safe space that is created there. You know, in some of the youth groups I've been a part of, it's on lock-ins and retreats where usually late at night, because there is safety and community created, people start opening up, sharing about their fears, sharing about some of their past, sharing pieces of themselves that they're afraid to let others see. By the end of a retreat or by the end of a mission trip or by the end of a lock-in even, youth feel like they've found relief, renewal, and the ability to be honest with one another, sometimes for the first time in a long time. I watched my own daughter go to school, although not recently, and day after day, getting ready and prepared, putting on all of the things that make her ready, which I think include some spiritual armor to shield herself from people's looks and from people's words, middle school can be a pretty tough place. And some, in some ways, we've never really gotten out of our middle school mindsets. We still try and build ourselves up to, to be able to hear what other people say and look past it. When people say, how are you? We don't always tell the truth. And yet, where is the truth? When we watch the news, we can hear competing versions of the truth. We can see a single incident and hear different perspectives, and the truth may be hard to find. And yet, we are people of the truth. And so we continue to listen and learn and seek. In Ephesians, our scripture says, speaking the truth in love, we must grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ, from whom the whole body, joined and knit together by every ligament with which it is equipped, as each part is working properly, promotes the body's growth in building itself up in love. Our bodies are all connected. At least that's how they work the best. What is it to think that we as the body of Christ in the world are to be remaining connected, connected to Christ, connected to each other, and then within the bonds of connection, within the community that is established, we're able to speak the truth in love for the building up of others. A beautiful picture. Where have you found yourself being called by God to speak the truth in love? Are there pieces of your truth that you've been afraid to share? Who's the best listener when you need to talk? When have you found yourself being the one to sit and listen and be a spiritual presence to another? 
And what does it mean to be in this Christian community? Sometimes we would prefer to not talk about difficult things. Sometimes we would prefer to be comfortable and, and maintain sort of that shallow surface level conversation. And yet God is inviting us to go deeper. Not for our own self-gratification, but the building up of one another, the building up of community, and the building up of the world. We live in a world that is longing for the truth, that needs to hear the truth that God loves each and every person. The truth that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And we may sometimes experience abundant life here on this earth, and sometimes we may feel like we're really looking for that. And God is with us through it all. That is the truth. I pray that as we go forth, as we hear Jesus sending us out, just like those disciples, that we would be sent forth to speak the truth in love within the safety of this community and beyond for the healing of the nations. Thanks be to God. Amen. Jesus went through all the towns and villages, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and healing every disease and sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, mm, The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. Jesus called his twelve disciples to him and gave them authority to drive out evil spirits and to heal every disease and sickness. For the sake of the call, I am laying down my all. No turning back, moving straight ahead. I'm on the right track, and it's all for the sake of the call. Uh -huh. Ooh. Bleh. Well. Stay on the right track and risk all.